So the Messianic Manic has this popular video that has been up for a few years called William Lane Craig vs. an Actual Scientist. In this, he includes clips from a debate where Craig debates Sean Carroll. And well, the thing about this debate is that I remember it and I thought Sean Carroll won it. So why am I bringing this up? Well, let's first look at one of the clips TMM took from it. Craig, of course, starts with the Kalam argument, the first premise of which is everything which begins to exist has a cause. And Sean Carroll pointed out that... The problem with this premise is that it is false. There's almost no explanation or justification given for this premise in Dr. Craig's presentation. But there's a bigger problem with it, which is that it is not even false. The real problem is that these are not the right vocabulary words to be using when we discuss fundamental physics and cosmology. This kind of Aristotelian analysis of causation was cutting edge stuff 2,500 years ago. Today we know better. Our metaphysics must follow our physics. That's what the word metaphysics means. And modern physics, you open a quantum field theory textbook or a general relativity textbook, you will not find the words transcendent cause anywhere. Okay, this is correct, and in fact, this is why I think Carroll won the debate. If you were going to have a universe described by math as an effect, then likewise the cause of that universe should also be describable with mathematical physics. This is just because a mathematical conclusion must logically follow from mathematical premises. However, what is ironic is that based on TMM's past assertions, he firstly has no idea what this science actually is, and secondly, he actually rejects the science Carroll is referring to here. Let's see another one of his clips to see why. This variety of pantheism suffers from all of the same problems as regular theism. How does a thing's existence extend beyond space-time? What does it even mean for something to have existence that is additional to the kind of existence we see in this universe? Well, this is not a problem at all. In fact, not only does something exist beyond space-time, but we can actually study that stuff with physics. Let's listen to the scientist Team M. Sites against Craig school him on stuff existing outside of space-time. Whereas space is just obviously not fundamental. <laughs> space is something where when you, when you go from classical mechanics to quantum mechanics, space more or less disappears. You know, in classical mechanics, what do you have? Some particles moving through space with some velocity. In quantum mechanics, you have a wave function of all those particles. And that wave function, we tend to talk a language that the wave function is a function of all the particles and their locations in space, but we don't have to talk that language. We can use what is called the momentum space description. We can completely describe the particles by how fast they're moving instead of where they are in the universe. And for that matter, we don't need to use any description at all. We can just use these quantum mechanical states in their own right, with no reference to space whatsoever. Clearly, Team M doesn't know the actual physics Carroll is using here against Craig. It appears he is just taking along under Carroll's coattails to gain a pretense of scientific authority from Carroll while actually denying the possibility of the existence of the same physics Carroll is using to refute Craig. Only he doesn't know this, as he apparently hasn't looked at the physics involved. Within a Planck time after the moment of the Big Bang, traditional physics breaks down and laws of quantum gravity come into play. And as it turns out, these laws of quantum gravity that account for the Big Bang are Carroll's own physics, and just so happen to describe the stuff existing outside of the physical space-time that TMM denies the existence of. Sean Carroll's pet project for the last few years has been the ADS Mira correspondence, which describes the emergence of space-time in terms of entangled information existing beyond space-time. So the kind of thing I'm doing, you know, right now is trying to figure out ways to answer the question, someone hands you a wave function, a quantum mechanical state, can you figure out what it is describing at the classical level? How many particles moving in what kind of dimensional space, etc.? So everything we know about quantum mechanics, quantum gravity, etc., denigrates space into something that is just a good approximation to low energies. And further, as explained by Carroll in the earlier clip, we don't even need quantum gravity to figure out that space-time is emergent. We can just use quantum mechanics. I had a video some time back entitled Space is an Illusion, showing how we can deduce the emergent and illusory nature of space from quantum mechanics alone just using entanglement and quantum nonrealism. It's not difficult to understand this if you look at the science involved. But then again, Tiemann wouldn't want any little thing like physics to get in the way of his physicalist beliefs that things only exist in the physical space-time universe. After all, such science might be uncomfortable. And speaking of uncomfortable, let's further look at the implications of Sean Carroll's physics for the first cause of the universe. Well, Carroll is right that we need an explanation from mathematical physics for the first cause of the universe. 
and according to Carroll's ADS mirror correspondence, that explanation happens to be entangled information. But let's see what else the math has to say about this entangled information. Now we can take it further. Look at entanglement. The red line and the green line. Let's look at the states of those. Let's call the state of the red line zero if it's close to you on the cube. And let's call it one if it's far away. And the same thing for the green. And the question then is, how should we write the state of the red and green line together. What's the joint state of the red line and the green line on the cube that you're experiencing? Well, intuitively, you're going, you can see that whenever the red line is in front, the green line is behind, right? And whenever the green is in front, the red is behind. And that's because they're part of a whole, namely the whole cube. And because of that, they're entangled and the right description for the state of the red line and the green line is the exact same equation that is the standard equation for entanglement. So this is, the top one is the conscious agent dynamics long-term behavior. And then if you write down the, the wave equation for the free particle in quantum mechanics, it's exactly the same equation. So we can actually read off, this is the non-relativistic case, you can actually read off a one-to-one -one mapping between non-relativistic quantum mechanics and this agent dynamics. And I won't go through it, this is the, the actual read-off of the equivalence between space and time and aspects of consciousness. Um, and if you're interested, I've got a paper that, that has the details that we don't have time for. But you can even read off energy and momentum. Well, as it turns out, the same mathematics that describes the sorts of wave functions that entangle systems is also the same math that describes conscious agents, which of course fits very nicely with other research into cognitive science such as the Integrated Information Theory of Consciousness, or IIT, whose discoverer, Giulio Tononi, states that quantum entanglement and integrated information to the extent that one cannot perturb two elements independently, they are informationally one. So according to Carroll's physics, which TMM cites as refuting Craig, the cause of the universe is a conscious agent existing beyond space-time that just so happens to sustain the universe as well. All you need is to combine Carroll's physics with a tiny bit of cognitive science to see this. The world consists of conscious agents, so what, what you see is not space and time and physical stuff. It's other conscious agents, and your interface is just presenting you that interaction in space as a space-time desktop. And, well, this just doesn't sound very comfortable at all, now does it? It's a real shame when we have to reject uncomfortable science when it gets in the way of our beliefs, now isn't it? Now, of course, Carroll claims to be an atheist, so how does this fit together with his view? Well, I asked him what he thinks of his physics entailing that space-time emerges from a conscious agent, and he told me that he didn't know enough about IIT to say. Meaning, given that he is an agnostic about IIT, he also just admitted that he is an agnostic about a conscious agent being the cause of the emergence of space-time. Meaning, he is actually not an atheist at all, but an agnostic in the truest sense. Now, in this case, I will give him a pass since he simply hasn't looked into IIT enough to know. However, as for TMM and the audience of atheists who follow him, it becomes very clear that they don't actually care enough about the science to learn it. If they did, they would realize that the science is telling them that a conscious agent from outside of space-time caused the universe and they would no longer be atheists. Instead, it appears they like to hide behind the old illusion of science versus religion, as well as the illusion that they are the defenders of science and reason. Well, in reality, they are embarrassing hacks rejecting the exact same science they pretend to champion. You're no mystery to me, boy. Last try. Get it right. What have you lost? What did I take from you? Right. Congratulations. Now speaking of science illiteracy among atheists who pretend to champion science, I thought I would tack this on since I didn't want to make a whole video on it. I found this clip from TMM in a video he made against dualism. I am obviously not a dualist, however, the physics ignorance was so embarrassing I had to comment on it. So let's take a look.
A classic objection to dualism is that in order for something non-physical to interact with a physical system, it would have to either inject new energy into the system, violating the law of conservation of energy, or it would have to rearrange the energy already in the system, violating the law of conservation of momentum. It's impossible to violate conservation of energy or momentum even if you tried. To demonstrate, just imagine a scenario where they are violated. Pop a whole galaxy into being, moving at warp speed out of nothing. The net energy and momentum before and after will be exactly the same. Energy is potential plus kinetic, but the universe on the whole is not moving with respect to its own frame. Thus it has zero total kinetic energy and momentum. It also isn't lying in any potential field as the universe is the sum of all physical existence. Thus it has zero total potential energy as well. Add these two together and you get zero net energy. And this would remain true even if you popped a whole new galaxy into existence, or had dualistic substances interacting with the world. However, apparently TMM doesn't understand that the universe has zero net energy content, as he illustrates this ignorance of the science in yet another video. If the law of conservation of energy is true, and energy cannot be created, I think it's pretty reasonable to infer that it never was created. Well, if the universe has precisely zero net energy content, then of course it is plausible for the universe to be created, as it is pretty easy to get nothing out of nothing. Of course, this is lost on Team M's fans, who don't seem to understand the science any better than he does. But then again, that is what happens when you have science illiterate internet atheists pretending to champion science. If you like this video, subscribe, and support me on Patreon. And don't forget to check out the books in my Alaris novel series, Alaris, The Lances of Light, and Alaris, The Pearl of Heaven, on Amazon Kindle in the description below. You can find us on Facebook as well, at Idealism and Science vs. Atheism.